Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Biggenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. Need a stress reliever before finals? Friday, December 7th in Philly at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, enjoy a relaxing yoga class, dance till you can't dance anymore, get a henna tattoo, and look at some interesting art. The price is free with regular admission to the museum. For more information, visit campusphilly.org. As the end of the semester comes closer, so does finals week. Location went around campus and asked students how they prepare for their finals and how they deal with finals week. Let's see how the students of Cabrini responded. To prepare for finals, I'm going to get myself a glass of wine and make myself some index cards. Well, I will be in the library until 2 a.m. Uh, studying for finals. Um, we're going to work hard and we're going to play hard. Yeah, pretty much. And then we're going to write our papers yeah. and study and eat chocolate sleep. frosting yeah, all day. in between papers. Yeah. To get myself ready for all my finals, I've just been doing a lot of studying, a lot of uh, like taking notes in class, like bullet points, mostly on my computer just to like get it all down. And uh, yeah. Studying and just trying to pace. Um, well, I only have like four or five finals, so I will be making note cards and making study guides and studying them for hours on end until it is memorized. Um, probably chugging a lot of Red Bull and uh, not sleeping very much. What about you? Pretty much the same thing, and then just studying whenever I have free time, which is pretty much never because <laughs> of all this work that I have for uh, projects and stuff. All right, all you Phillies fans, head down to Citizens Bank Park for a Phillies tree lighting ceremony. Charlie Manuel will be the guest of honor and will light up the Christmas tree. This is just in time for the Phillies holiday sale in South Philly, where you can get the latest Phillies gear. The tree lighting will begin Saturday, December 15th at 5 p.m. Also in Philly on Saturday, December 15th, on Cumberland Street, Greens Grove Farms will be hosting the annual Holiday Bazaar. Shop till you drop. There will be homemade crafts, treats, and homemade grown bulbs and wreaths. A perfect place to get into the holiday spirit and to shop for family and friends. For more information, visit campusphilly.org. The Phillies aren't the only ones getting ready for the holiday season. Cabrini held a Christmas choral concert in the mansion this past Sunday, followed by the college's annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony Monday night. Let's take a closer look.
That was your trip around the block. Now let's go to Rob for this week's sports update. The women's basketball team opened up CSAC play with an 84-23 thrashing of the Notre Dame of Maryland University. The team held a commanding 52-8 lead at the half. Freshman Megan Martin led the Cavs in scoring with 11 points. The men's team also opened up their CSAC schedule against Centenary College, winning 65-58. Jeremy Knowles, 14 points, led the team. Both swim teams swam down I-476 for the Swarthmore College Invitational last weekend. On day one, the men's team placed fifth out of five teams, and the women placed fourth out of six teams. On the second day, the men improved to fourth out of fifth place, and the women dropped to fifth out of sixth place. In Philly sports, the tailspin, otherwise known as the 2012 Philadelphia Eagles season, continued with a 38-33 loss to Dallas on the Sunday night football stage. The loss gives the Birds their eighth consecutive loss and puts them at 3-9 overall. They will travel to Florida on Sunday to take on the 6-6 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Birds also fired defensive line coach Jim Washburn on Monday, replacing him with former D-line coach Tommy Brasher, who was coaching for the first time since retiring in 2005. The Sixers fell at the hands of the Minnesota Timberwolves, 105-88 on Tuesday night. Jason Richardson led the team in points with 14. Next up for the Sixers is a Friday night tilt against the Celtics, which will be the Celtics' return to Philly after last year's playoff tilt. Baseball's annual winter meetings have heated up, and after speculation that Shane Victorino could return to the city of Brotherly Ville up ended, it looks like the next big Philly signing could possibly come down to either Josh Hamilton or former Philly Michael Bourne. Who do you want to see in the red pinstripes next season? Tweet us your thoughts at Location News. This week's Location Athlete of the Week goes to Fran, the franchise, Rafferty. Rafferty was named to the D3Hoops.com National Team of the Week after going on a scoring binge to open the season up. That was your weekly sports update. Now let's go to Val for your trip across the nation. Since October, due to Hurricane Sandy, gas prices have gone down nearly 21 cents a gallon, according to the Lundberg survey. It has been the biggest price decline since early December of 2008, when the recession really hit. Right now, Lundberg predicts that the gas prices will fall another 10 to 20 cents because of the weak demand due to economic decline. The Pentagon is creating a new system that will map the digital battlefield of cyberspace. It's called Plan X, and it has become very clear that cyber war is the future, according to CNN. Last month's Plan X document explained how to fight a cyber war and mapped out platforms which can deploy cyber weapons, measure damage, and strengthen communication between defense systems. According to a member of the advisory board of the Naval Postgraduate School, Andrew Serwin, we are at a time when physical war is winding down and we're beginning the battle in a cyber domain. President Barack Obama and Chief of Staff Jacob Blue, who is in the running for Treasury Secretary, are in the midst of facing a budget shutdown. President Obama and Liu are talking with Republicans about avoiding the fiscal cliff, which means automatic tax increases for all Americans and government spending cuts on January 1st. With Liu by his side, this agreement could lead to a deficit reduction, thereby helping Obama fulfill his promise of bringing the two parties together. According to CNN, the plan is off to a slow start, but the question remains whether Lou would be better off overseeing the Treasury Department or running the White House as Chief of Staff. That was your news from across the nation. Now here's Megan with your weekly entertainment update. From tabloid speculation to royal truth, after rumors circling since June 2010, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince William and Kate Middleton are finally expecting a baby. The family announced their royal bump on Monday. Since then, the Duchess has been hospitalized for severe nausea and vomiting. This is typical during pregnancy, but precaution must be taken, especially for the heir to the British throne. Feathered sequins, diamond studded lingerie strutted by 40 of the world's top models had over 10 million viewers' eyes glued, and some people well drooling. Yep, that's right, it was time for Victoria's Secret annual fashion show to air. As always, talent filled the runway with Rihanna, Justin Bieber, and Bruno Mars. To add to the hotness, the most talked about signature piece was the $2.5 million fantasy bra worn by Alessandra Ambrosio. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's go to Bethany for your trip around the world. In Egypt's capital city, hundreds of thousands of Egyptians are protesting against President Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood in Tahrir Square. Morsi grabbed power from the judiciary, which had already dissolved the parliament. This leaves Egypt's first ever elected civilian, President Morsi, with the same dictatorial powers that the people revolted against last year when they ousted the dictator Hosni Mubarak. In about two weeks, there will be a public referendum on the proposed constitution. 
An internet blackout in Syria causes theories and concerns. There is a speculation that last week's two-day internet blackout was a psychological move by the government, causing fears that the government is trying to control the information flow in and out of the country. A cable was cut, ending all web communication with other countries. Internet is the main communication. Cutting it off is binding, according to Alexia Jade, a spokeswoman for the opposition in Damascus. After several days, internet communication was restored. An agreement focusing on economic growth, employment, and competitiveness highlights the plans of the new president of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto. Peña was joined by the Democratic Revolution Party this past Sunday in signing the pact for Mexico. During his inauguration speech, the new Mexican president announced measures including education reform and pensions for those over 65. Peña's Institutional Revolutionary Party had ruled Mexico for 71 years before being voted out just 12 years ago. Our person of the week this week is Professor of Philosophy, Dr. Joseph Romano. Let's check in with Alex to hear more. There is a committee called um, the Council of College Affairs. Four faculty, four administrators, and eight students were elected. And we could do anything. We could propose anything. I chaired that committee in the early 70s, and I proposed that we go co-ed. I chaired the... Uh, Philosophy, uh, philosophy department for a number of years, and I was also moderator of a very active philosophy club. Uh, we would put on panel discussions. So, uh, our panel discussions were so popular, we would advertise them to the community. We used to get people from Wayne to come out and hear them. I had another teacher in philosophy, of all things, that uh, came into the classroom and said, well, I know that this is a required course and nobody really wants to be here. And I'm sitting there saying, yeah, go ahead. If that's the way, if that's the way you think, you know, what are you doing here? You know, have any pride in your work? You know, you know, yeah. I want my students to know that this is the most important thing we're going to do today. You know, nothing is more important than what we're going to do right now. Mm -hmm. I get new ideas. Yeah. I want to get as many ideas, if not more, than my students. I'm, I'm still a student myself. If I stop learning from any course that I'm teaching, I don't teach that course anymore. So the inspiration comes from questions that students ask, the things that they write on the paper. I've gotten so many new thoughts on the spot, in the classroom, from a question see something in a different way you know and uh, so it's inspirational for me to teach and in that teaching process i learn and that's uh it's a pretty good feeling it's it, it's it's not work no when you like what you're doing work and play are the same thing I can't imagine myself doing anything else. <laughs> That's the problem. You know, people keep saying, when are you going to retire? When are you going to retire? You know? yeah. And I, I can't think of doing anything I like more than teach. Thanks for catching up with us this semester. For Location Weekly News, I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Bethany Biggenhoe. Have a fantastic break, Cabrini.